Hi, this is Hilton Giesner, host of The Moss Show, a SharePoint podcast at www.themossshow.com. In this video, we're going to look at how to integrate SharePoint lists with Microsoft Office Outlook client. So to start off, let's go ahead and have a look at some actual lists that exist in the site. So first up, we have a document library. We've got a calendar here. We've got a task list as well, and we have a contact list. And let's see how these get integrated with the Microsoft Office Outlook client and how we can interact with them once they're inside of Outlook. To integrate a list with Outlook, what we do is we go here to the Actions menu and we click the Connect to Outlook button. When we do this, Microsoft Outlook will open up and it will prompt us for how we want to integrate this particular list with the Outlook client. So once it's loaded up there, you can see it brings up the uh, connect to the SharePoint contact lists to Outlook in this case because it's recognizing it as a contact list. If we click the advanced button we can go ahead and customize some of the details for the connection and when we're done when we click yes we can see it creates a new PST file for us on the left there and then depending on your connection settings it may prompt you to log into the SharePoint site again. Once it's done that you can see that it loads the data from the list directly into Outlook. So it's downloading this data directly out of the SharePoint list and I can go ahead and then open these items up as regular Microsoft Outlook contacts. And you'll see that um, I've got some additional buttons here that have uh, additional behavior like I can open directly in a browser and you'll see that it shows me the uh, direct URL to uh, view that item as if I was viewing it directly from the SharePoint list. And see there's also an option here to copy to my contacts so we can copy this directly into the Outlook uh, PST Outlook contacts as well and then we can interact with the contact as uh, as a normal contact as we ordinarily would. You can see that we can modify the data of the contact as well so for example we can go ahead and give this contact a photo um, as an actual um, graphic image to attach to it and then when we save the uh, contact and close it you'll see that it's syncing with the SharePoint list so it's uploading that um, attachment file and then when we refresh this list inside of SharePoint, you'll see that the contact now has an attachment. We can go ahead and open it up and you can see that that JPEG file has been uploaded into the actual SharePoint list as well. Of course, aside from an actual file attachment, you can go ahead and change the details for one of the items. So we can load up one of the contacts here and go ahead and change the first name and save it. Once again, it will sync to the original SharePoint list go a bit more quickly this time because it's not sending a file and if we go ahead and refresh you can see that it's modified the SharePoint list accordingly. Back in Outlook if we switch out of the folders list and look at the actual contacts view in Outlook we can see that we have the standard my contacts which store our actual Outlook contacts and we have this new other contacts section which um, represents the SharePoint contacts. If I load one of them and click the copy to my contacts button, you'll see that that contact is duplicated into the actual Outlook my contacts, uh, in this case the Outlook PST file itself. The actual contacts list has some minor modifications, like we can go ahead and uh, rename it or delete it directly out of there. But if we go to data file management off the file menu, you can see the actual PST file that's created for us here to store the SharePoint list data. And in addition, you can see that under the SharePoint Lists tab here, there's a representation for that list as well, which tells us where the list is coming from um, and giving us some other details. And we can go ahead and create or modify it slightly um, as we did when we created it as well. Some of the same set. If we switch back into the SharePoint site itself and we go and look at the other lists, let's go ahead and bring the task list into Outlook as well. Once again, we get the same uh, prompt uh, asking us to specify exactly how we want to bring that list in. And you can see here then that it brings the item in as um, an additional task list into the tasks section in Microsoft Outlook. And um, it brings through all of the fields that match the Outlook fields as well. You can see it also picks up the uh, assigned to person. So task one in this instance is assigned to me, logged on as the administrator here. So you can see it actually brings it not only um, as the uh, simple list but it brings it um, in as a task list for the particular tasks as well 
and I can go ahead and modify those tasks, change the priority and status and completion, for example, and go ahead and mark that particular task that's assigned to me as complete. And then, um, as before, we see that it's syncing with the SharePoint item as well. So I can go ahead and see that that task is now marked as complete in the SharePoint list as well. And if I go ahead into the SharePoint list and um, reset that setting and go ahead back into Outlook and resync the item, then it will uh, download the changes again and reopen that item in my uh, to-do list again as well. If we go ahead and explore that send and receive process in a little bit more detail, you'll see that under Tools Send Receive, there's a uh, section down at the bottom here for Send Receive Settings. And we can go ahead and define specific Send Receive groups. So the default group here is one called All Accounts, which will go ahead and sync everything. You can see that it's going to sync my mail. And in addition, there's a section down at the bottom here for SharePoint, which lists in the bottom all of the SharePoint lists that I'm connected to, with a checkbox up at the top there specifying to include the SharePoint lists in the syncing as well. I can go ahead and deselect that one, and I can create a new sync and receive group just for the SharePoint items. This will allow me to synchronize just SharePoint um, items separately from my mail. So when I do that, then uh, you can see it appearing here as a separate list. We can go ahead and set uh, schedules, and additional options just for syncing the SharePoint items. So for example, I can go ahead and set it down to five minutes to sync SharePoint items separately from my mail syncing. I can also go ahead and manually choose that item off of the tools menu if I want to sync directly just with my SharePoint lists. Back in SharePoint, let's go ahead and have a look at how we can um, integrate with a shared calendar into Outlook as well. So once again, I go to Actions and Connect to Outlook. Again, I get the prompt asking me to specify how I want to connect. And then inside of Outlook, you'll see that I get this new calendar as an additional calendar um, added into the calendars list. So, for example, you'll see it's downloaded one of the items in the calendar there, uh, which is some team event. And in addition, using the Outlook 2007 features, I can overlay these uh, multiple calendars together. So you'll see I can switch between them and see um, faded below the items in the um, other calendars as well. So if I switch to my own calendar, I can go ahead and set a private meeting and um, it will appear in the same screen, but it won't actually store it into the SharePoint um, calendar itself. But if I go into the SharePoint calendar and I create an entry in here, um, exactly as I did before, go ahead and create a new appointment. Then when I do this, it will once again, uh, as you can see on the bottom right there, sync with Microsoft uh, SharePoint list. And we can see the item appearing into the SharePoint calendar directly. Now, if we go back to the private calendar, even though the entry inside there doesn't appear in the SharePoint list, we can still integrate these Outlook um, appointments with SharePoint as well. If we go to the invite attendees here and go ahead and make it a meeting, then the meeting workspace button up at the top here will allow us to uh, integrate this particular meeting with SharePoint. And I can go ahead and create a meeting workspace to go ahead and do this. So you may need to um, connect this Outlook instance up with the particular